Now we'll talk about products and quotients of square roots. In other words, if we have square roots, can we multiply them and divide them? And the answer is, of course, we can. We just have to recognize a couple of properties involved here. And I'm going to make two statements, and I'll show you that, that these are true. For any positive numbers a and b, these two statements are always true. Okay, the first is this. The square root of a times b, and a and b could be any positive numbers. The square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. That might strike you as obvious, and if it does, that's good, but that's important to understand. And the same thing works with a, quo a quotient. If I have the square root of a over b, that's mathematically equivalent to the square root of a over the square root of b. And we can see that these ideas are true by looking at a couple of examples. So let's, let's look here first. I'm going to look at the square root of 9 times 4. What I'm claiming is that that will equal the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Well, let's look at this left side. The square root of 9 times 4 is just going to be the square root of 36. And we know the square root of 36 is 6. Well, over here on the right side, the square root of 9 right there is just a 3. And then we have our multiplication. And the square root of 4 there is just a 2. And 3 times 2, sure enough, is 6. And those are equal to each other. So this is, in fact, equal to that. Let's look at another, another example. The square root of 100 over 4. I'm claiming that that will equal the square root of 100 over the square root of 4. I'm going to scroll down here. Okay. Well, let's look at the left side. The square root of 100 over 4, well, clearly that's the same thing as the square root of 25, because 100 over, over 4 is just 25, and the square root of 25, we know, is just 5. Now let's look at the right. The square root of 100 over the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 100 is 10, so this is 10 over the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, and 10 over 2 is 5. Those are the same, so this is in fact equal to this. And it's true not just in these particular cases, but in any cases. So here, these are these two ideas again stated in general terms for any numbers a and b. The square root of a times b, both under the radical there, is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So you can take a, a product under a radical and separate it into two radicals, or the other way around. You can take two radicals that are multiplied together and combine them into a single product under the radical. And the same thing works for division. The square root of a divided by b, you can take that quotient that's under a radical and split it up into two radicals, the square root of a over the square root of b. Or you could take two radicals that are divided and combine them into a single fraction under one radical. Now another important point here, these concepts work for numbers that are multiplied or divided, but not for numbers that are added and subtracted. For example, if I have this, the square root of a plus b, I can't say that that's equal to the square root of a plus the square root of b. That is an error. I can't take two terms under the radical and separate it into two different terms over there. And the same thing with subtraction. I can't say this. I can't say the square root of a minus b equals the square root of a minus the square root of b. That is not correct. It works if these two things, the a and b, are multiplied or divided, but not if they're added or subtracted. And you can see that it doesn't work with a simple example. The square root of 9 plus 4, for example. If you try to say that's equal to the square root of 9 plus the square root of 4, well, on the right side, that's pretty easy. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, and that gives you a 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. But on the left here, we have the square root of 13. And the square root of 13 is not 5, because 5 squared is not 13. So you can clearly see that, that this is wrong. Those are not equal to each other. 
Now these ideas are useful if you're told to solve some problems like these. Here we're told to evaluate 900, the square root of 900 over 81. And by evaluate that means we need to find a value. So 900 divided by 81, I don't really feel like doing that in my head. Um, that's double digit division problem, but I don't need to. I can break this up into two radicals, the square root of 900 over the square root of 81, and both of those are pretty easy to do. The square root of 900 is 30, because 30 times 30 is 900, and the square root of 81 is 9. So I just have 30 over 9, and that can reduce to 10 over 3. So not too bad. And I used this idea that the square root of one number divided by another is equal to the square root of 1 divided by the square root of the other. In this next example, down here, the square root of 2,500. Well, I can recognize that 2,500 is the same thing as 25 times 100. And I, I would typically do this step right here in my head and not write it down. But I could, I could end up writing this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 100. And then both of those are pretty easy. The square root of 25 is just 5, and the square root of 100 is 10, so we get 5 times 10, which is 50. Now, in this last example right here, it's pretty easy to see that 2,500 is equal to 25 times 100. And the, that this happens to factor into numbers that are perfect squares. But sometimes it's not so easy to see the factors of a number. Think about this example. Look at the number 1,225. How does that factor? Well, let's, let's go ahead and try to factor it as much as we can. Let's uh, find the prime factorization. Well, 1,225 isn't divisible by 2, and it's not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 5. We can write this as 5 times 245. And 245 is clearly divisible by 5. In fact, 245 is equal to 5 times 49. And the 49, you can see, is 7 times 7. So this is 5 times 5 times 7 times 7. And look at that. That could be written as 5 squared times 7 squared. So this means if you had to find the square root of 1225, if you could factor it, you could see that this would be the same as the square root of 5 squared times 7 squared. And that could be split up into two pieces. That would be the square root of 5 squared times the square root of 7 squared, which would just be 5 times 7, or 35. 